Oh my god, hi. Sorry. Hate to do that to you, but I will see you later. What is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today we are back in Forza Motorsport 6, and today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video, which is we're going to be maxing out the 2017 Ford GT, we're going to be seeing what we can really get out of this car, maximum power, and I do have a lot more footage to release, I have a second vlog to release about Forza Fuel, which will be coming soon, but before we actually go on, I know that the blue color, this this proper Ford blue, I mean, it really looks good on this car, and it really com uh, kind of completes the look, but, since we're maxing this thing out and doing all sorts of crazy ridiculous stuff with it, uh, ridiculous? R ridiculous, not ridiculous, this isn't Harry Potter, but no, um, first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna find some other color, uh, to paint this thing, whether that be a matte or a semi-gloss or some kind of just crazy, like, metal flake or something like that, we'll see, because I know we can adjust the color later, but if we find something in here that just looks really good, I might actually stick with that. You know what? The metal flake green is different enough. I mean, that's almost, dude, that's almost like tree frog green. That's, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we should go for it. It's pretty cool, honestly. I mean, nobody else is going to have a 2017 Ford GT in that color. I mean, and if you guys have seen some of the colors that people have ordered, like their McLaren P1 or their LaFerrari in, all, then all of a sudden this, this kind of, we'll call it tree frog green doesn't really look all that crazy. I mean, when you think about some of these colors that people order in, like I said, their uh, their P1s, their LaFerraris, even their 918s. But gonna go ahead and go straight to the upgrade shop. First thing we're gonna do is build the engine. We're not messing around here. We're just gonna go straight up massive full build. There's not actually too much we can upgrade in each individual piece. I mean, ignition system, fueling system, not much we can do, honestly. I mean, exhaust, everything just pretty much has one tier of upgradability. Even, wow, even the cam, or cams. <laughs> Definitely don't think this is a single cam. I was just realizing, I was just thinking about that, and I was like, this probably isn't a single cam. I had a couple of tiers for the pistons. Race turbos, 898 horsepower. Come on then. Come on, 910. And well, obviously, I mean, lightweight flywheel. So we're maxing it out at, at 910 horsepower and 2,902 pounds. So, actually, let me see the torque. So we're rocking 910 horsepower and 741 pound-feet of torque. That's actually kind of a big split. It's a bigger split than I thought it would be, especially for this Ford EcoBoost turbo engine. And the thing is, I mean, ooh, wow, when you drop it down just that little extra bit. I mean, it's not Stance Nation low, but it's like, that's just kind of sexy, honestly. That's, that's pretty sweet. Go ahead and, like I said, upgrade as many things as we can to try and take the weight down. And once we do the race weight reduction, that's one of the biggest things I'm curious about. 2,488 pounds. Suddenly, this thing has become a lot faster. I mean, even... Even in terms of, you know, besides the power, it's already, it just became a hell of a lot faster from the upgrade in, uh, well, I should say upgrade, which was a downgrade in weight. So, then again, a downgrade in weight is an upgrade. What did the Lotus guy say? I mean, simplify and add lightness, I think? So, let's see. Race diff. And now, at this point, really all that's left is anything aesthetic if we want to do it. Um, the Forza bumper, we probably won't do it on this car. Um, just because, wow, that wing is massive, like, massive. Dude, that is, like, ridiculously huge. I can't even, <laughs> I, I can't even think about putting that on the car right now. I might put it on in the future, but holy crap. That's, like, too big. <laughs> well, hey, actually, I've seen some, I've seen some proper race cars with wings about that big, but we're not putting it on this car. For tires, we're obviously gonna run race tires. Um, this thing would be so uncontrollable without race tires. I mean, is it probably going to be uncontrollable anyway? But let's see, 265s in the front, and we're going to run a 345 in the rear. And for wheels, let me see if I can use any type, any specific type to take the weight down. If there's any HREs I can use to take the weight down, or maybe even, ooh, the Dimag nine spokes. Those, I don't like the look though. That's the problem. Is I don't like the look. The NK NTO 3Ms don't really take any weight down. The RPF ones take 10 pounds off. Take, ooh, the Fisk Profile Fives. Oh man, dude, the 
<laughs> the Gramlite 57s. I want to use those, but they don't take any weight down. None of the HREs take any weight down. Koenig Afterburners do, but I don't like the looks of those. Koenig Bright Lights are okay. There's one wheel, one specific wheel in here, and it might be in a different category, but I just remember it as always being a wheel that was ridiculously good for taking weight down. These Rota uh, JSPLs, they look okay, but I feel really guilty putting Rotas on this car. <laughs> I know it's not real life, but still. Uh, the Watanabe Cyclones, I think. I mean, you can't even see them, but we can change the color later. At least I think. I think we can change the color on these. Some of the wheels you can't change the color on, so it's a little bit iffy. But if you go in and change the color later, hopefully we'll be able to change it. Let's see. Paint car. All I want to do is paint those wheels. Or repaint those wheels, I should say. And... Wheels! Okay, yeah, we can paint them. Sweet. Special colors. I want something that kind of stands out, but not like too crazy. I want it to stand out, but I don't want it to be like... That's actually not terrible. Um, That that looks pretty decent. That that does look pretty decent. I'm, I'm actually, I'm good with that. Because it's not, I didn't want the wheels to be like overly shouty or anything like that. I just wanted them to look okay. And I wanted them to have a little bit of an understated color to them without, like I said, being like ridiculously shouty because if you've got a really shouty paint job on the car already then you really don't want shouty uh wheels because when you get to that point you're kind of like it's almost like an imbalance which is why black wheels look so good on red cars but we're gonna go ahead and do a race now and we're probably gonna run it at probably gonna run it at bernie's alps actually and just for the fun of it i am going to this is again like i said probably a not a good idea but we're gonna stick it on a full grid of drive -atars. Five laps, and the thing is, this thing is this thing is now in P class, which means we're going to be running against like LMP cars. So at that point, I mean, <laughs> at that point, you're kind of playing with fire a little bit. But let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll get this thing started. I'm just like waiting in anticipation right now of how insane this car is going to be, because it's going to be either. It's gonna either gonna it's either gonna work really well, or it's gonna be so bad that I'll never want to drive it again. So I'm I'm kind of curious as to see because it could go all over the road. It could go uh, go straight into the back of an LMP1 car, which I don't think I don't think your normal average LMP1 car is gonna like having a Ford GT up its bottom. But <laughs> we'll see what happens though. We've got well, we've actually uh, we've got like. A Veyron. I saw a Veyron up there. I saw an Ultima GTR. So we got a couple of street-ish cars. I saw a LaFerrari, but we got a lot of race cars. I see a C7R. See, yeah. We got a P1. What? They're starting us in pole? And go! Wheel spin! Wheel spin! Wheel spin! Oh, grip! Grip in fourth. I'm surprised. Wow, it's actually, you know what? It kind of works. Power! The grip is really good. It follows these lines really easily. I mean, you can actually get on, you can get on it out of corners, and even with 910 horsepower, it actually does grip up and go. I mean, you do have to pay attention to, you have to pay attention to your grip levels and things like that, but that's not to say that it's like some kind of unwieldy like beast of a car to drive and that LaFerrari braked so late I'm like <laughs> I'm really impressed actually by that that he was ballsy enough to break that late come on oh that's getting a little squirrely staying to the inside braking line what braking line I didn't touch the brakes through there holy crap that LaFerrari dropped way back whoop oh my god that's more air than I've ever gotten there before. That's insane. You know what? We need to up the, the, the difficulty. Before we go any further, we need to back out, up that difficulty level, and see what we can do. Because that, that was too easy. <laughs> that was, like, properly too easy. I didn't expect those guys to drop back that fast. I mean, the LaFerrari, I was thinking he was going to kind of stay with us. but Because he was for a while. He was out breaking us, but... 
I think the thing is, we were so fast through that breaking zone that you couldn't really, you couldn't really imagine them keeping up anyway. So let's see, drive a car, drive a car, drive, yes, I like to drive a car, uh, <laughs> drive a tar difficulty, let's say highly skilled, expert, pro, unbeatable, let's put them on expert, let's put them on expert, let's make it a little bit of a challenge, let's select a track that is Bernie's Alps, and we were doing it on the Stadplatz circuit, so, alright, now, now that we've got the Drivatars up on Expert, I can't believe I said drive a car. Um, <laughs> but no, the Drivatars up on Expert difficulty. We're going to be rocking the Ford GT again. And um, just with the little bit of time I had with it, I'm actually thinking that with some suspension tuning, this could be a properly good circuit car. I mean, if I drop it down a class and put it right at the top of the class below P class, it should be a really, really formidable machine for that class. The only thing I want to do a little bit of work to as well as the brakes, um, I kind of want to tune them a little bit because they, I'm not sure I like the way they're balanced right now, like exactly, I, I want to tune them a little bit so they're just a tiny bit more front bias. I like running a lot of front bias in my brakes so I can do a little bit of brake initiation oversteer on tight corners, but it's still not a bad set setup. That was a voice crack too. Alright, come on and go! Wow, if you shift early enough, you can make a grip up in third. Oh my god, okay, yeah, these guys are a lot, <laughs> they're a lot uh, crazier with their, okay. What? Okay, he's pushed me to the wall, well, not pushed me to the wall, but. Oh, jeez, that's, whoa, running over the uh, rumble strip a little bit, that kicked me sideways. Love the sound of this thing. Come on, let's get that P1. Breaking. Whoop, whoop. Down to fourth. Where's he gonna go? Is he gonna go on the outside? Jeez, these guys slow way down. I mean, you kind of have to, but still. All right, we're full on the power now. Dang it. Okay, behave yourself. Keep that back end under control. Okay. Keep the back end under control. Behave yourself. That's the one problem with this thing is that if you... Whoa, did, that, did the P1... Oh my god, the P1 flipped it. Holy crap. Oh, 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 definitely didn't want to get air there before. Thing is, that, that time when we got air right there, that was, that was crazy. I was not ready for that. Oh my god, hi. Sorry. Hate to do that to you, but I will see you later. Not a little bit of a bad slide. Oop. Get back under control. Uh-oh. Hi. Hi. He's angry. We've made him angry. We were taunting the LaFerrari with that drifting. I don't think he appreciated that. Oh, get your... Jeez, get your tail under control. We need to catch the LaFerrari, not drift everywhere. Stick with it. Stick to the plan. Stay composed and stick to the plan. Don't need to be going all over the place. Power out of the corner. The nice thing about it is, like, in fourth and fifth gear... I was literally floored in mid-corner back there. There was no uh, spinning up of the rear tires. I mean, we got massive, th what, 345s in the back? But still, man, I'm actually really really Im impressed and kind of surprised. I mean, you get a little bit of exit oversteer, but that's, that's to be expected. You got exit oversteer in the standard car. That's where we take him. That's 100% where we take that LaFerrari. And actually, hanging the tail end out a little bit in this car can help you out. God, the thing flies. It flies off of that hill. That's the farthest uh, jump I think I've ever had a, in uh, on this track. In any kind of car, really. Maybe that and the jelly suspension willies. But still, the jelly suspension willies was kind of a... I don't want to call it a turd, but it was... Maybe was a little bit. I mean, like I said, I don't want to call it a turd, just because it, it, it wasn't, but the problem I had with the Jelly uh, Suspension Willys, the Jelly Willys was just a little bit too, a little bit too crazy for its own good, I think, and it just ended up, instead of being a fun, like, Jelly Suspension car, it just ended up being a real pain in the butt, just because of, oh, no, crap, okay, this is bad. This is very bad. Come on. 
spinning through the first three years, spinning in fourth. We need traction. A lot of Ferrari's going past an aerial Adam. All right then. Jeez, oh my God. Had to back out of the power a little bit because it was spinning in sixth, mid corner. Breaking, 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 breaking. All right, stick with it, stick with it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Trying not to jump up too much over that little, uh, little crest. Staying in boost is important. Come on. What? Where'd that tire come from? He's going to break real hard here. Almost flew right over the dude. Wow. All right. Come on. Keep it controlled. Keep it controlled. Okay. It's waggling his tail again. I mean... Don't get me wrong, this is this is fun. Drifting this thing all over the place and, you know, well, a little bit of a wall tap. Enough to where it took points away, unfortunately. But it's still really fun to slide this thing around. The only thing with it is that it sometimes, like I said, is not the best for your lap time. Nonetheless, I find it fun. And then just power out of it. The thing is that it has, the, the thing is that it has so much power and there are sections on this track where I can easily outsmart the AI, or not the AI, the drive cars, and just take a couple of seconds, the sections way faster than they're ever willing to take them. I can kind of sacrifice a couple of corners to, to drifting, pretty much. If I can break late. That air brake really helping us out, hauling the thing down. Back in, coming around just a little bit. Let's see if we can maintain it and then get them to grip up. There we go. Man, this thing would be a riot around the Nurburgring. Maybe a little bit too much of a riot, because we're in the wall again. Wasn't paying attention to the slide. Stay composed, stay composed. Whoop. Oh, we got this. You know what, actually? I want a celebratory drift around the final corner. Fourth gear, e-brake, kick it out. Keep it in boost, and this thing just stays sideways. It's actually remarkably controllable for one being a mid-engine car, and two being as um, being as powerful as it is. High-powered mid-engine cars are not generally the pick for a drift car, but this one I feel like it could be. Now I feel like you know honestly I was expecting it to be a little bit worse. I was expecting it to be a little bit worse at everything. Um, at drifting, I expected it to be a little bit worse at, um, at actually, you know, racing around a circuit. I expected it to be less controllable, but the thing responds to maximum power really quite well. And you know what we're actually going to do? Just, I guess, well, just because, is we're going to see what we can get out of changing up the final drive a little bit. We're going to take it to the Le Mans straight, we're going to run this thing like crazy, and we're going to see what it'll do. Now, before we do that, we need to go to tune setup real quick. We need to go to gearing. Right now, it's 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 gonna say a top speed of 239.8. Let's see what we can get when we start to reduce that final drive a little bit. We're looking at a 247.9. Reduce it some more. We're now looking at a 248.2. 248.2. See what a three, like exactly three final drive. 248.5. So it is still increasing, but only very slightly. 247.4. 247.9. So there's got to be some kind of sweet spot where we can kind of figure out what this thing's uh, what this thing's max is going to be. 245.6 Almost back to 248.2 248.0 All right, let's you know what? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and test drive it real quick. We'll test drive it on the Le Mans straight. 
Uh, Lamont's a Lasarth straight, and we'll see what we can get out of it. I'm wanting to get, um, on the old Molzan circuit, I'm wanting to get 250. I feel like we can get 250. I feel like 250 is very plausible. I feel like it's a worthwhile, um, hunt for a top speed in this car. So, I think we can go ahead and try it. Not only can we go ahead and try it, but I feel like, I mean, obviously this track has a little bit of a downhill section, um, on the straightaway itself. So, we'll probably see in the neighborhood of 252-ish, um, if the, if my calculations for the, uh, for the correction for the hill, the downhill is correct. So, the, and the other thing too, the other thing about this car is that with, I feel like we might be able to get a little bit more if we did modify the arrow a little bit. But then again, the arrow that we've got right now is unmodified and I feel like it might stay. But at the same time, if we stick a fixed wing on here and fix it to, uh, to just be catering towards speed, then it might be slightly better tuned than the stock one. I'm not sure though. I just feel like I can't really relate to you guys how, how completely con controllable this car is for all the power that it has I mean I'm weaving it through here right now like it's got maybe 400 horsepower whereas it really has like 900 and the thing is with a 910 horsepower car very few of them can handle corners like that I mean there were periods of those corners where I was on half throttle I mean like right now I'm on full throttle and it, not a lot of 910 horsepower cars wouldn't like there are not a lot that wouldn't spin coming out of there so anyway, let's see what we can do. Into sixth. Just past 200. Come on, man. That's, oh, nearing 230. 230. 235. Come on, 240. Seventh gear now. 241. 242. 243. 244. Oh dear god, 245. 245. 245. Any more? Do you have any more left? Please. Anything left in you for GT? Come on. Come on. 245. 240. Uh, it's too late to break now. We're going straight into the tire wall. And we have no damage on the front of the car. That's actually quite miraculous. But um I expected a little bit more speed than that. But I definitely wanted to include a top speed run um, in this maxed out, uh, maxed out build video. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later.